Alright guys, now that we took our text file, took each of these pieces of data and stored it in separate variables, we can go ahead and insert that information into our tables. Now we don't have any tables created yet, remember we only created a database, but that isn't going to be important and it's going to be uh, cool what I'm going to show you guys, so stay tuned. So, uh, why is it that as soon as I start a tutorial, I immediately start getting freaking phlegm in my throat? I don't know. But anyways, the very first thing we want to do is we want to run a query to test if the table already exists for the company. And why do we want to do that? Well, say we decide that we want to add a new company to this. Well, we don't know if we need to create a table because that company wouldn't exist yet, or if a table already exists and there's information, we would just need to insert information. So we need to go ahead and figure that out. Is there a table already for this company? So my first query is going to read like this. Select all in the keyword in MySQL for all is star from and remember whenever we created this function we passed in a name of the table. Now the name of the table is just going to be the same as the ticker signal so go ahead and say select all from Google or select all from Yahoo and this is either gonna return a couple things. Let's go ahead <clears throat> and store let me th don't want to make a type. Sometimes I can't talk whenever I'm typing. But let's go ahead and store the query inside of uh, what's called a let's go variable name result. So let me go ahead and run my SQL underscore query and this is gonna take the string of text and remember SQL is only a string of text right now and it's gonna run it as a MySQL query. So it's gonna run this as a MySQL query and store the result in a variable named result. Now this is either gonna come back it's gonna come back false if there is no result or true if there is a result. So what we need to do is we need to make an if statement to pretty much say okay if there was no result forgot my little dollar sign there so if there was no result then there must have been no table for the company and I'll tell you why let me explain this I probably should have done this before if a table already exists for Yahoo and we say select all from Yahoo then the query is going to run successful and result is going to be true so therefore this code is never going to run because because we say if result is false only run this code so say we have a new company that's getting created for the first time and no table exists for it. If no table exists for Google already, it's going to say select all from Google. Well, whenever it tries to query, it's going to say, dude, there is no Google and results going to be false. So that is why we want to create a table only if result is false because that would mean that no table exists already. So in order to create a table in MySQL, what you want to do is, let me just go ahead and copy this beast right here copy and let me just go ahead and delete everything inside there and name this SQL2 because whenever you're uh, looking at your queries I don't like to name any variable the same thing in any file so that's why I'm doing that now in order to create a table go ahead and hit create and make sure I spell that right table and right after this you write the table name of your table and since the table name is the same of the ticker we're just going to go ahead and write create table name. This is going to create a table name called Yahoo, Google, Netflix, whatever. So it's going to create a table name this. Now after this you write parentheses and inside the parentheses you write okay what do you want that column to be named in what type of information is that. So we want a column to be named date and it's going to hold date information. That's actually a data type. That's what I meant, not type, what data type. Now we want this to be the primary key because check this out. If you're familiar with MySQL, you know that every row should have a unique identifier. Now usually you have a separate primary key or user ID if you ever made a game. Now the only thing that is unique on each one of these rows is the date. It can have the same open, high, low, close, volume, but it can never have the same date. You never have two rows with the same date. So that is why I want to make the date the primary key. So go ahead and write primary key and just go ahead and write date like that. That is how you set 
something to a primary key through um, you know a query so now we have date now let's see what we have open high low close and volume and all that stuff alright so after date we have open and open is going to be a float now a float is just something with uh, decimal points it's not an integer because it can have like a percentage now open is a float high is a float and let's see low is a float scroll this bad boy over low is a float and then I have close is a float and then let's see volume now check this out remember I said that volume is basically the number of shares or the number of trades that were made during the day this can only be an even number you can't make like two and a half trades it's either you trade or you don't so this one I'm going to make an integer so volume int now amount let me just go ahead and copy this amount change this is going to be if I can scroll over amount change is going to be a float and also I think the last thing I have is percent did I name that percent or percentage percent change this is also going to be a float so now what you want to do is just go ahead and end your line and go on to the next line now I'm actually gonna check my query real quick because I'm scared day day primary key open flow high flow low flow close flow volume in it percent change flow so now you know behind the scenes of what I sound like <laughs> whenever I'm checking queries embarrassing so now what we want to do is remember this isn't a query we didn't query anything yet we didn't run everything anything through MySQL all this is right here is a string of text in order to actually query it you have to use the MySQL underscore query function and now we pass a string in there and that runs whatever string as a query so now that we have that we need to say okay if you didn't have a table already then go ahead and create a table that's all we did right here so the only thing we have left to do is say okay so by the time we get to this point whether a table was created right here or if one already existed we want to take the information that was stored in these variables from our array and we want to actually insert it into the database into the tables so in the next tutorial what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be finishing up this function and I'm gonna show you guys how to actually insert the data into the database hint it's very similar to this just the syntax is a little bit different so anyways thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe yada yada, yada. I'll see you next time